Here's a question. Why isn't Wall Street in jail? It's a question I love. It's also the title of a great new expose in Rolling Stone. Reporter Matt Taibbi, who I'll talk to in just a moment, wanted to find an answer to that question. So he started looking into it. And a Senate investigator gave him this spoiler alert. Quote, everything's effed up and nobody goes to jail. That's the whole story right there. Now, that turns out to be slightly inaccurate. Actually, one guy did go to jail. His name is Bernie Madoff. He's the Ponzi schemer who's serving a 150-year prison sentence. But he said in a jailhouse interview released today uh, in the New York Times, quote, the banks had to know. But the attitude was sort of, if you're doing something wrong, we don't want to know. And that gets it exactly right. They didn't want to know. They're making money hand over fist. Who wants to find out? By the way, you know why Madoff went to jail and no one else did? He stole from the rich. That was stupid. If you steal from the average guy, you get away with it. Now, you want to see examples? How about Dick Fulton? He was running Lehman Brothers. And, of course, it imploded. You know what he walked away with? $529 million. He's suspected of hiding compensation to make it appear that he got less. And he's uh, also suspected of lying about his compensation to Congress. What kind of charges did he get? None. How about punishment? Squat. Now let's go to Joe Cassano. He worked for AIG Financial Products, which crashed spectacularly. And by the way, that was largely thanks to Joe Cassano. <laughs> nice work, uh, Joe. And he walked away with $280 million during his tenure. He's suspected of misrepresenting the risk of mortgage derivatives, which he famously said wouldn't, quote, lose a single dollar in the market. What kind of charges did he face? Oh my God, look at that, he also faced no charges. How about punishment? A zilcho, who could have seen that coming? How about John Mack? He was the on again, off again head, and actually is the current chairman of the board of Morgan Stanley. He was investigated in 2005 for allegedly giving out insider information, which may have resulted in a quid pro quo deal worth $10 million to him personally. He also faced no charges and no punishment. And the way that that went down is actually a perfect illustration of everything that's wrong with our financial system and why they get away with all this. Gary Aguirre was the SEC investigator who smelled something fishy in Max Dealing, so he wanted to look into it. And he basically, this is the good guy. He was trying to do the right thing. So what happened to Gary? Well, he went to his bosses. And his bosses at the time were Paul Berger. He was the SEC's associate director of enforcement. Oh, he got fired, but we're going to get back to that in a second, all right? So he goes to his bosses, the guy we just told you about, and now uh, where does his boss at the time work for today? You, are you sitting down? Are you sitting down? Morgan Stanley. Weird. The guy who wouldn't prosecute now works for the guy he wouldn't prosecute. Then Linda Thompson, she was the SEC's director of enforcement, another boss of uh, Gary. Guess where she is now? She's a lawyer representing Wall Street firms. Weird, huh? I didn't see that coming. Now, here are the external forces who pushed back on the SEC to make sure that there was no investigation. Mary Jo White, she was an attorney representing Morgan Stanley. Guess where she was before that? She was the U.S. attorney in New York, the top cop on Wall Street. And, of course, there was Gary Lynch. That was Max attorney. Before that, he was the SEC's director of enforcement. Do you see what's happening here, guys? It's called a revolving door. They're waiting for the payout. Are you going to go investigate the guy who might give you millions of dollars in your next job? Well, if you're a really good guy like Gary, you might. And remember what happened to Gary. Now let's do it. Boom. Fired. Gone. Everybody else gets paid. Gary gets fired for being the good guy. Now you see how they get away with it? All right. Let's do more, though. Let's, joining me now is Matt Taibbi, the guy who wrote that article. He's a contributing editor for Rolling Stone. And uh, uh, by the way, that article appears in the new issue of Rolling Stone. It's fascinating. All right, Matt. Look, I got a lot of guys uh, who I went to school with who are part of this circuit. Mm -hmm. And if you go tell them what you tell them, or if I tell them that, they go, oh, come on, you're being totally unfair, right? right. Are, are, are we being unfair to them? They just, they're just tr good guys trying to do their job? No, I'm not. We're not being unfair. Look, in this country, the reality is if you go out and you sell a dime bag on the street and the cop sees you, there's a very good chance that you will actually go to jail. You will do real jail time. But insider trading, fraud on a massive scale, stealing billions of dollars, putting a million people into foreclosure, defrauding thousands of uh, janitors and cops and firemen out of their pensions, 
nobody's going to jail for this stuff. It's, it's really, it's a class issue. These guys do not go to jail. Madoff was the only person in the entire financial crisis who was doing time. Even somebody like Angelo Mozillo, they couldn't find a way to put him in jail. And all they did was fine him less than half of his net worth. So it's, a, it's an incredible situation. It's really, really dangerous for the country. So Matt, look, a lot of them will say, look, I use bad judgment. My bad dog, okay, so I lost, you know, a couple of billion dollars, but there was nothing criminal here. Right. No. Uh, look, all of these banks on a larger level were complicit in a sort of a general fraud scheme. And that fraud scheme was to, uh, to sell mortgage-backed securities, toxic mortgage-backed securities as AAA-rated investments. During this mortgage boom, they were essentially selling worthless crap as AAA-rated investments, and they were selling it to people like pension funds. That's why your pension has decreased in value, because some banks sold you phony securities that they knew were going to blow up. That's securities fraud. That's a that's a, a a broad fraud scheme that all these banks were complicit in. But at a low at a, another level, they were also involved in basically every kind of crime you could have in the financial services market. Uh, insider trading. They were hiding billions of dollars of losses. Lots of these banks were involved in Enron-esque schemes to hide losses. Uh, again, fraud. Uh, in, you know, insider trading. All that stuff was going on, and nobody got prosecuted for it. At the banks, uh, were there emails specifically? saying hey we know this stuff is toxic or we know it's not going to work or we know it's junk yeah absolutely i mean a, a great example is is the bear stearns hedge fund that blew up this was the one case that they, they actually took to trial uh where these two guys these guys who were running this this hedge fund that would involve subprime mortgages and that was the this the blowing up of this fund was what caused bear stearns to go out of business um but they had emails from these guys telling their bosses look we are never going to make money uh on this stuff and then a few days later they were out saying publicly this isn't a, a disaster it's all going to be fine uh, and that's just straight up fraud uh, when, when they do that that's how that's what a Wall Street crime looks like uh, and they weren't convicted for it right and then you got Goldman Sachs email saying hey that we're selling crappy stuff oh yeah. you know you got Mozilla and his email saying I can't believe we're selling this crap so but uh, if people at home got to be wondering so why are they doing it right uh, like it seems like that's gonna sink your company and it, it sunk AIG sunk Lehman Brothers so why they do it anyway what people have to understand is that the system of incentives on Wall Street has been completely perverted. I mean, all of these guys, it doesn't matter. They don't care if they blow up their companies. They don't care if we end up having to bail them out. They get their bonuses anyway. All of these guys, even the ones who, who, who are in disgrace now, guys like Joe Cassano, uh, who you know helped blow up AIG, he lost, he made $280 million, and he's, he's keeping all that money. It, uh, it doesn't matter how irresponsible or how wrong you are. Uh, the incentives are, the, are there for these guys to, to, to do all this stuff because because they never have to pay in the end. The taxpayers had to pay every dime of that $280 million eventually when and AIG and went under, and, and the guy gets to keep it. It's crazy. But it's not crazy because, as you explained, to finish that up for us, why don't they prosecute? Well, it's, uh, I think the, the key issue here is, is the revolving door. I mean, I think that the, everybody, every source that I talked to in researching this story pointed out the same thing. All these guys, the, you know, the two main cops are the SEC and the U.S. Attorney here in New York. Um, if you are one of the top investigators in the SEC or the, or the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, when you leave those offices, there's a, there's a partnership waiting for you at one of these big corporate defense firms. And those partnerships are worth millions of dollars a year. These guys are all the equivalent of college basketball players waiting for their first NBA deal. Uh, it's, it's an enormous amount of money. And it's, so what ends up happening is it's a, it's, it's a collegial sort of merry-go-round of lawyers who all know each other. They're all on the, on the first name basis with each other. You have a situation like Aguirre. You know, he's trying to prosecute, uh, investigate Morgan Stanley. And the, Morgan Stanley's lawyers are going five levels over his head to talk to the director of enforcement. They're talking to his boss's boss's boss while he's trying to, to prosecute this case. Right, and at the very least, it's implicit saying, hey, if you're you're good, you're a team player, we got a job at Morgan Stanley waiting for you with millions of dollars. Absolutely. Or the law firm that is working for Morgan Stanley, and that's how it works. That's why there's no prosecutions. Great piece, Matt. Really appreciate your time tonight. Thanks. Good to see you, Jack. All right.